All right, so the flow for today is going to be, well, this is going to be kind of like the inner thigh blowout here, okay? Very much a hip opener. We're going to take this toward eight angle or Ashtavakrasana toward the end of class. If you don't remember eight angle, don't sweat it. I'll go through a long, detailed demonstration once we get to that point. So plenty of prep before we get there. But it's going to be a lot of work in the inner thighs. Definitely get into the hamstrings quite a bit as well. You're definitely going to feel this by the end. So just work things as best you can. Um, and I have one demonstration before we begin. So what's going to happen once we get into the main part of the flow? Every sequence will bring you to the front of the mat at the end. We'll take this into curl first and then I'm going to key this from crow into this flying lizard shape and there's a bunch of ways to work this flying lizard is basically eh, when I started this is basically just an intensely uncomfortable variation of crow but the thing is the reason it's valuable and the reason it's in this flow is because it's really good prep for eight angle it gets you really activating your inner thigh and working that as much as possible before we actually get to the big pose at the end of class so what's going to happen from here is going to be at the front of the mat you're going to come into this from a forward fold I know everybody's seen crow before but this does bear repeating so when you come into your crow just set the hand down about shoulder width dig your fingertips down lift your heels bring the knees to touch your arms and then just look forward lean forward take it slow let your hips lift up off the floor and let your feet lift well keep your hips high and let your toes lift together bring the big toes to touch pull the heels in toward your seat and you can take crow to whatever extent you like and from here i'm just going to set this right down and go into flying lizard now, if you just want to stay with the regular crow, that's fine. I do recommend going into Flying Lizard, even if you just don't like the pose. It is going to help before, by the time we get to the, end, the pose at the end of class, keep in mind. And the big difference here between this and a regular crow is you're going to bring one leg around one of your arms. So I'm wrapping my left leg around my left arm, left foot between my hands on the front, the right knees on my right arm from behind. And then keep your hips high, set your palms down flat, and then with that front foot, lift it up and squeeze that leg around your arm and keep squeezing and just hold on to that. If your hips are tight, this is not going to be comfortable at all and it's not supposed to be, keep in mind. Just work it as best you can, see how far you can hold. Look forward, lean forward to lift the back foot just like crow. And you can always just stay here with your legs pulling in toward each other and this is good enough. Now, if you wanna take things further, you can move a little bit. You can extend the back leg. Just be sure you can keep your elbows pulled in and actually hold Hold on to your balance. And then taking this through the vinyasa, you kind of just got to set everything down, come into plank and move through the vinyasa. But if you want to work the transition, if you're more experienced, you can pull that back knee in, see about unwrapping the front leg, Woo! pull up, maybe you find a crow. And then from there, you can take it into chaturanga. Now, it took me a couple of years to get into that t transition where I could actually demonstrate it reliably, all right? And it still kind of sucks, it's a lot of work. But if you're interested at all in going that direction, just start chipping into it. There'll be some point where you got to stop. It's not going to work right away, in mo most likely. It's very hard to get into, but it's something to work toward. So just work things as best you can. And even if you're just holding on to that flying lizard pose with that front leg just wrapped and not lifting the back foot, that's fine. Just take this into the NFI, work things as best you can. And again, see how far you can go with this today. So all that said, let's go ahead and start the standing. Bring yourself up to the front of the mat. And we're going to take this about halfway down to a squat. So I want you to bring your feet out a little wider than your hips. Heels in, toes out. And then bend the knees. Bring your elbows to your thighs. Bring your hands together. And just feel this out. Now you can have the fingertips together, the palms, whatever suits you best. But press your arms and legs into each other here. Hold some tension between the limbs. And then press your spine up toward the ceiling. Just stay around it. Keep your shoulder blades spread apart so you're not just slumping down all lazy like. Now let your head just hang. Let your neck relax. And then just close your eyes. So just give yourself a moment to settle in like this. Let your mind quiet down. And with your eyes closed, just take a moment to scan your position here. Just so see that the arms and legs are pressing in toward each other. Press down into your toes. And then hold that engagement with your spine rounded. Shoulder blades stay spread apart. So keep this relatively active. And again, just relax your neck. When you're ready, start to deepen your breathing here. So with the inhale, it's pulling as much air as you can. Try to fill up your lungs and hold on to all that breath at the top. As you exhale, constrict the back of your throat and slow your breath down on the way back out. And just work to make your exhales last at least as long as your inhales as you breathe. And just keep breathing like this to begin. When you're ready, take a deep inhale. When you exhale, just open your eyes. 
And with your next inhale, just roll this up to standing. Bring your head up last. Open up your palms at your sides. And we'll just keep moving slow from here with an in your inhale. Bring the arms up high. Exhale, hands down through heart center. Inhale, reach us up high again. Exhale, hands through center. Inhale, arms up high. Exhale, through center again. Inhale, reach us up high. And then with the exhale, this time lean to the right side, right arm down, stretch your left arm right, pull the left shoulder back and gaze up high. With your next inhale, back to center, reach up. And then with the exhale, lean this left, left arm down, stretch your right arm left, gaze up high here, pull the right shoulder back. With your next inhale, back to center, arms high. Now with the exhale, lean right again, right arm down, pull the left shoulder back, gaze high here, take it further, lift your left heel up off the floor, stretch your left arm longer. With your next inhale, bring it back to center, reach up. And then with the exhale, lean this left, left arm down, right arm stretching left, gaze high. Pull the right shoulder back, take it further, lift your right heel. With your next inhale, back to center, both arms high. Exhale, lean this right one more time, right arm down, stretch your left arm right, pull your left shoulder back. Keep leading, lift your left heel. Maybe take it further and hover the left foot up off the floor completely. With your next inhale, bring it back to center, reach up with both arms. And then with the exhale, lean left one more time. Left arm down, right arm stretching left, pull the right shoulder back. And then lift the right heel, take it further, try to hover that right foot. With your next inhale, bring it back to center, reach up. And then with the exhale, hands come down to center, bend your knees. Keep your heels down and sink down low. Back and forth, inhale, come up all the way, reach high. Exhale, hands to heart center, sink down low. Inhale, all the way up again. With the exhale, bring the hands in, sink down. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, sink this down low again. Inhale, all the way up. And with the exhale, just sink down deep one more time and hold here. Now bring your hands to your knees, elbows out wide, and just keep your hips low. Keep the heels down on the floor. Just move around a little bit. And try to take this back and forth, twisting, bringing the left shoulder down, keeping your knees out wide. And then the other way with your right shoulder down. And just take this back and forth and keep moving with this. Again, stay as low as you can. And then when you're ready, just one at a time, bring your hands down to the mat behind you. And then go ahead and sit yourself all the way down. Now once you're down, just go ahead and fold your knees over to the left and to the right. And just take a moment just to twist a little bit. And then bring this back into center. Now set the feet down about hips with distance apart in front of you. Hands behind the shoulders about shoulder width. Now palms down, point your fingertips out to the sides. Just lift your seat up off the floor. And then when you're ready, just crab walk this to the back of the mat. So just walk this back. Let your weight go side to side. Don't think about it too hard. And then once you come all the way back, walk this forward. Just keep your hips low. And again, let your weight shift side to side. Now, once you bring it to the front of the mat, take it back again, but this time exaggerate the movement and try to open up your chest to the right and to the left. Press into that base hand. And then from the back of the mat, walk this forward again and keep on opening your chest side to side as best you can. Now, once you make it to the front of the mat, walk back one more time, but just come back into center and go ahead, set yourself down, shake your hands out for a moment. And since we're here, we'll take it in reverse tabletop. So feet in front of you, about hips with distance apart, hands behind the shoulders, about shoulder width, palms down, fingertips forward if you can, otherwise you can rotate out to the side. But press down, lift your seat up off the floor, and let's take it up and down. So with the inhale, press your hips high, squeeze your glutes. Exhale, sink back down. Inhale, lift this up again. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press your hips high. Exhale, come down. Inhale, lift up one more time and hold here. Now keep your glutes squeezing, stay lifted. You can look forward, look up, or hang your head back, but keep pressing up toward the ceiling. Hold the tension of the pose and keep breathing. Take an inhale. And then with the exhale, come all the way down. Now once you're down, take a moment, shake your hands out a little bit. And we're going to take it back up, but this time with a figure four. So again, hands behind the shoulders, about shoulder width, whatever rotation you like. Just lift your seat up off the floor. And then bring your left foot towards center, cross the right leg over the left, and bring the ankle past the thigh. Now curl the toes of the right foot, keep them curled, keep that knee out to the side. And then take it up and down from here with the inhale, press your hips high, squeeze your glutes. 
Exhale, sink down. Inhale, lift this up again. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press up high and hold this time. Now keep your glutes squeezing, keep your hips lifting. Just breathe here. Again, you can look forward, look up, or hang your head back. And as your glutes are squeezing, try to press out right knee toward the floor, but your hips are still pressing high. Keep breathing here. Take an inhale. And with the exhale, just bring it back down. And once you're down, just take a moment, shake your hands out a little bit. And then, of course, we've got to take it to the other side. So again, just bring your hands behind the shoulders, back shoulder width, pressing your palms, lift up. And then bring the right foot towards center, cross the left ankle, pass your right thigh. Now curl the toes, the left foot keep them curled, keep that knee to the side. And then up and down here with the inhale, press your hips up high. Exhale, sink down. Inhale, lift up again. Exhale, lower. Inhale, press up high and hold this time. Now again, you can look forward, look up, or hang your head back. But keep your glutes squeezing, keep lifting, and keep pressing that left knee toward the floor. Keep breathing here. Take an inhale. And then with the exhale, bring it all back down. Now once you're down, take a moment, shake your hands out just a little bit. And then when you're ready, we're going to take it down onto the left side. This is going to be a reclining position to begin. It's not going to feel like you're reclining in a moment. But come down onto your left forearm and onto your left hip. So left leg straight, right hand in front of your chest. Stack your legs right over left. And we're going to take this into a forearm side plank. So go ahead, press into the full. Lift your hips up as high as you can. Now it's enough just to stay here and keep your hips lifted and lean into that right hand. If you can go further, maybe bring the right hand to your right hip. And it's good enough to stay here. Now, if you want to move with this, be sure you can keep your hips lifted, but then lift the right knee. Just touch the big toe to your left leg and take it back and forth, moving that right leg, big toe to the floor in front of your left leg. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee, big toe down in front. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee, big toe down in front. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee, stay with me, big toe down in front. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee, big toe down in front one more time. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee and then bring everything back down. Take a couple of breaths and switch sides. Come down onto your right forearm and onto the right hip. Left hand in front of your chest. Now go ahead, stack your legs left over right and then lift your hips up off the floor. Maybe just stay here and this is plenty. Keep your hips up high. Now if you can go further, bring the left hand to your left hip. This is good enough as well. And if you can go further still, lift your left knee, touch the left big toe to your right leg. And then bring the big toe down in front of your right leg. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee, big toe down in front. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee, big toe down in front. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee, big toe down in front. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee, big toe down in front. Lift the knee, big toe down behind. Lift the knee and then bring everything back down. And come into all fours. Once you're in all fours, give yourself a moment and just move around. Stretch your hands, stretch your fingers, let the shoulders and hips move a bit. Maybe just twist this a little bit lightly. And just breathe here for a moment. And then bring yourself into center in all fours. And we'll take this into the wrists. So wrists underneath the shoulders and knees underneath the hips, palms down. Now looking at your hands, go ahead and rotate your fingertips out to the side and then in toward your knees as far as you can. Both hands. Set your hands flat. Spread the fingers out wide and dig your fingertips down into the mat. And keep that grip with your fingertips pressing down. Press your spine up toward the ceiling. Now this could be enough. You can stay here. Maybe just lightly move side to side. But if you can take it further. Keep that grip, keep the tension in your hands, and just bring your weight back so the heels of the hands start to peel up. And then go ahead and bring your weight forward. And just take things back and forth like this and breathe here. Now as you move and keep your fingertips pressing down, hold that tension in your hands. And you certainly don't have to force this. It may not take a whole lot of movement for you to feel that stretch, keep in mind. And then the next time you bring your weight forward, just stay forward here. And one hand at a time, keep your fingertips pointing in toward you, but flip the right hand over, back of the hand down, palm up, and then flip your left hand over as well. And you can always bring the hands closer to your knees, but flip the right hand over again, palm down, and then flip the left hand. And just keep on taking this back and forth and go ahead and switch it out. Now, if you bring the hands in closer, you'll take less weight. It's definitely more intense with the hands further forward. 
and just move at your own pace. Now, each time you move, be deliberate here. Reset the hand, spread the fingers out wide, dig your fingertips down, whether the palms are facing up or down. Try to straighten your arm at least briefly. And then the next time you end up with both palms up, just hold that shape. Fingers spread wide, fingertips pressing down straight on. Just press your spine up toward the ceiling. And then go ahead and release that. Come up onto the fingertips. And we'll take this in a little bit of a different stretch. And we'll take this one form at a time. So from here, bring the hands in close and bring the right forearm down with the palm facing up. You can keep your left hand on the floor, but bring the left knee onto your right wrist and then work that knee across your forearm. Now, as you're moving, go ahead and flex the fingers. You should feel the tendons move underneath the knee. And to take it further, start to work that knee into the meat of the forearm toward the elbow. And just feel it out. You can use a lot of pressure or a little. You may not need much. You can always focus on any tight spots that you find. And once you make it to the elbow, just work the knee back toward the wrist. And then from the wrist, go ahead and release and shake that right hand out. And let's take the other side. So when you're ready, bring your left forearm down with the palm facing up, right knee to your left wrist. And just work that knee across the forearm. And again, I recommend flexing the fingers. You feel the tendons move underneath. And you can work that knee up toward the elbow. And then from the elbow, go ahead and work the knee back down to your wrist. And then once you're ready, just come up onto the fingertips, come down to sitting on your heels, and then just take a moment, shake your hands out, loosen up your fingers and loosen up your wrists. Now, once the hands are ready, come back into all fours, and we'll warm this up further into the hips, and this time we'll take this little lopsided setup from here. So go ahead and bring the right forearm down to the floor. Now keep the right elbow to the side, but bring your right hand to center so that forearm's diagonal. Slide your left hand back, elbow stacks over the wrist, keep the elbow pulled into your side. Now keep your chest facing down, and then put the weight to the right knee, hover the left, and hover the left knee. Just keep the left knee lifted like this and keep the knee bent. And then take it out to the side. So lift your left knee up as high as you can. Keep the toes pointed left and just breathe. Hold here. Keep your chest facing the floor. When you're ready, with an inhale, extend that left leg straight back. Exhale, knee to left shoulder, pull it in close. Inhale, the left leg back again. Exhale, knee to shoulder. Inhale, the left leg back. Exhale, knee to shoulder one more time. Now set that left knee on your left arm. Keep the foot lifted. And we're going to move the foot and just take this from the hip. So pivot from the hip, bring the big toe down to touch the floor. Pivot from the hip, lift the foot, keep the knee in place. Pivot from the hip, bring the big toe down. Pivot from the hip to lift. Pivot from the hip, big toe down. Pivot from the hip to lift. Pivot from the hip, big toe down. Pivot from the hip to lift. Pivot from the hip, big toe to the floor. Pivot from the hip to lift. And then go set your left knee down, come up to all fours. And we'll take it on the other side. So once you're ready, bring it down onto your left forearm and stand your right hand. Left elbow to the side, the left hand moves into center. Slide your right hand back, stack the elbow over the wrist and keep the elbow pulled in. Now just keep your gaze down, keep your chest facing the floor. Put the weight to the left knee, hover the right and keep your right knee bent. Now right knee out to the side as high as you can lift and hold here. Keep your toes pointed right. Now with an inhale, extend your right leg straight back. Exhale, knee to right shoulder, pull it in close. Inhale, the right leg back again. Exhale, knee to shoulder. Inhale, the right leg back. Exhale, knee to shoulder one more time. Hold here and set that right knee on your right arm. Keep that knee in place. Now pivot from the hip, bring the big toe to the floor. Pivot from the hip, lift the foot. Pivot from the hip, bring the big toe down. Pivot from the hip to lift. Pivot from the hip, big toe down. Pivot from the hip to lift. Pivot from the hip, big toe down. Pivot from the hip to lift. Pivot from the hip, big toe down. Pivot from the hip to lift. And then set that knee down. Come up onto your hands. And just take a moment to move here. Maybe shake your legs out a little bit. And then one more thing before we move on from this part. And this will warm things up and you'll definitely take this into the hips. So when you're ready, just bring it to all fours. Wrist into the shoulders and knees under your hips. Bring your right foot forward outside the right hand. And then sink down, bend the elbows, and just start to move back, forward, side to side. You can circle around inside the right leg, but just feel things out. And you should feel any of that tension, any of that tightness in the inner right thigh. And then go ahead, press in your hands, bring your right knee down and switch this out. Step your left foot forward outside your left hand. And then sink down, start to move back, forward, side to side. You can circle around. 
And then go ahead, press into your hands, bring your left knee down. Step your right foot forward outside your right hand again. Tuck the toes of your left foot, lift your left knee. Now once you lift this up, just keep the shoulders of the wrist, keep the arms straight, dig your fingertips down. And then step the right foot back next to the left high plank. And then bring your left foot forward outside your left hand. Now step your left foot back high plank again. Right foot outside the right hand. Now, keep the arms vertical, shoulders, wrists, press into your palms. Move your hips straight up and down. Now, if you prefer, you can keep walking like we just did, or we'll hop this on three. Now, the key is to lift your hips up high, and that's what gives you the time and space to move. So from here, one, two, three, back and forth. One, two, three. Now, focus on taking the weight in your hands and bringing your hips up high. One, two, three, one. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now a couple more rounds. Focus the weight on your hands. Try to land your feet as lightly as possible. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, and three. Go ahead, bring both knees down. Come back to all fours. And give yourself a moment just to move around, breathe. Now you can stay here, breathe, take a little break, maybe take another stretch before we move on. But whenever you're ready, go ahead, tuck your toes, straighten your legs, lift your hips, and find your downward facing dog. Now once you find the down dog, take a look at how you set this up. Hands about shoulder width distance apart. Now flatten your hands, press into your palms. You want to feel some weight toward the base of your thumbs, keep in mind. Sink your chest low to the floor. As your chest sinks down, press your hips up as high toward the ceiling as you can. And keep that long upward reach from the wrists up through the hips. Now engage your, your core a little bit. Pull some tension in around the belly and around the little ribs. And as your hips press high, if your legs are tight, let go a little bit. You can always bend your knees. And if you want to just stay loose, you can pedal that and let your hips move side to side. When you're ready here, take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just bend the knees. Look forward, step to the front of the mat. Let's take a ragdoll fold. So feet about hips with distance apart, deep bend of knees. Let your belly touch your thighs, let your head hang, let your spine round. And just let everything go long and loose here. Let the muscles of your neck relax. Now you can hang your hands to the floor. You can reach to opposite elbows if you like, and maybe shake this side to side or loosen further. And then when you're ready, just release any grip that you have. Keep the bend in your knees to begin, and just restack your spine, so slowly round this up to standing, bring your head a blast, and then open up your palms at your sides. When you're ready, with an inhale, reach your arms up high, and with the exhale, just bring your hands down to heart center. Take a moment to breathe, set an intention, let your mind clear, find your focus. Take a deep inhale. And then with the exhale, just release your hands. Now with the next inhale, reach your arms up high. And then with the exhale, slowly fold this forward. Hinge at the hips, start with a straight spine. Put a little bend in the knees. Keep your core engaged. Move smoothly and just release this at the bottom. Now when you're ready, with an inhale, lift up halfway. Fingertips to the floor to your shins. Lengthen forward through the crown of your head. And then with the exhale, just bring your hands to the mat. Step it back to high plank. Find your shape. Wrist at the shoulders, palms press to the floor, press the floor, away from you, press your spine up toward the ceiling, keep that lift. Take an inhale. Now with the exhale, slowly bring your shoulders forward as the elbows bend. Now keep your body in line, elbows pulled into your sides, lower with control, all the way down into your belly. Now once you're down, flatten the feet out behind you, hands under the shoulders, elbows into your sides. And we'll take this up and down through low cobra. So with an inhale, just peel up your head, neck and chest. Exhale, roll this back down. Inhale, peel this up again. Exhale, lower. Inhale, peel up one more time. Now just stay lifted. Keep the lift in the upper body. Press into your feet. Take some or all the weight out of your hands. Elbows at your side. Draw the shoulders back. Keep your gaze forward. And then lift up a little bit higher still. Take an inhale. Exhale, roll back down. Hands under the shoulders. Elbows into your sides. Press your palms into the floor. Let's take it to upward facing dog. So with an inhale, straighten your arms. Now pull your chest forward, let your hips hang, stay in the tops of your feet. Keep your legs active, work to lift your knees up from the mat. To take it further, kick your feet down, squeeze your glutes, try to pull the hips forward to deepen and lengthen the arc through the front. 
Now lift with your arms, but lift with your shoulders. Keep your neck long. Keep your chest pulling forward. And then take an inhale. With the exhale, pull your belly. Hips are patted down, dog. <laughs> Pedal out for a moment. Let your hips move side to side. And then we'll take it through our sun salutations here. Steady movement. Take a deep inhale. Now with the exhale, bend your knees. Look forward. Step or float to the front. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold down. Inhale to stand. Now with your arms up high. Exhale, fold all the way back down again. Inhale, halfway lift. And with the exhale, hands to the mat. Chaturanga's next high plank to low. Now with an inhale, open up your chest, lift your gaze up, dog and co or cobra. And with the exhale, pull your belly in. Bring your hips up out of down dog. Two more rounds. Take an inhale. With the exhale, bend your knees. Look forward, step or float. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold down. Inhale to stand and reach us up high. And then exhale, fold all the way back down again. Inhale, halfway lift. And with the exhale, hands to the floor, high plank the lows next. With an inhale, open up, pull forward. Exhale, draw it back in and bring your hips back up. One more round, take an inhale. With the exhale, bend your knees, look forward, step or float. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold down. Inhale to stand and reach us up high. And then exhale, fold. All the way back down again. Inhale, half lift here. And with the exhale, set the hands, chaturanga. Now with an inhale, open up, pull this forward. Exhale, draw it back in. Bring your hips back up. Just find it down with facing dog and breathe here for a moment. Now from your downward facing dog, inhale the right leg high behind you. And then open this up, bend your right knee, hang your right foot left, take this into a scorpion dog. Now let your hips open up, keep your shoulders square, just feel that twist. With the next inhale, straighten the right leg, three-legged dog. Exhale, bring it forward, knee to chest, shoulders over wrists. Inhale your right leg high. Now exhale, twist, knee to left elbow. Inhale your right leg high. Exhale forward, knee to left elbow, now hold here, stay forward. Take an inhale. And with the exhale, set the right foot down outside your right hand. Now shoulders over wrists, press into your palms, grip the floor. Let your hips move straight up and down. And we'll take it back and forth on three. So from here, one, two, three. 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 And one, two, and three. Now it's right foot forward, left foot back. Bring that right foot between your hands. And we'll take a kneeling lunge. So bring your left knee down, flatten the left foot behind you. Hands to hips. Everything sacks are vertical from the left knee up. Go ahead, bring your torso all the way to upright. And then once you're ready, with an inhale, reach your arms up high. With the exhale, hands through center. Bring the left elbow outside the right thigh. Now press the elbow to the thigh. Press your palms together. Look over the right shoulder. And keep extending your spine long as you're twisting to the side. Now this is good enough, but if you want us to take it further, you can bend that right knee. Sink down and forward, pull that left hip forward. And if you want to take it deeper, you can tuck the toes of to your left foot and see about hovering that left knee up off the floor. But keep your twist wherever you take this to. Keep breathing here. Now I want you to keep your twist with your chest open to the right side, but bring the right hand to the right hip. Release the left arm. Bring it to the floor forward of your right foot. So right shoulder high, look down. And then when you're ready, bring your weight to the right foot. Pull the left knee in toward your chest. And then extend the left leg straight back. We're taking this to revolved half moon. Now look to the right and keep the right shoulder high. You can keep the right knee bent or straighten the right leg. If you want to take it further, maybe reach your right arm high and keep the twist in the upper body. If you can take it further still, you can bend your left knee and bind this. Reach back with the right hand. And if you find the foot kick into your hand, let this pull your shoulder back and just breathe here. Everybody take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just release both hands down, both feet down, forward fold. Now from the fold, take an inhale, lift up halfway. And then with the exhale, set your hand, slide the right foot back, come into low lunge. Now from your low lunge, we're going to switch this out. And actually, I'm already messing this up. 
No, I'm not. Okay, so we're going to take this from, from the high lunge. Actually, no, we're going to take this to warrior two. This is what we're going to do. With an inhale, drop your right heel. Lift your torso, windmill the arms, and just open out to the side. Got to make sure I'm still on track. So deep bend left knee, straight right leg, one line from the front heel to the back arch. Sink your hips down low, stay open to the side. And then when you're ready for me, take a half bind, right hand behind your head, palm facing in. Now keep the right shoulder pulled back, keep that elbow po pointed toward the back side of the mat and then face the right palm toward the left palm rather toward the ceiling. Now let's take it back and forth like this with an inhale reverse. Reach back, lean back, gaze up high. With the exhale, extend forward as far as you can and keep looking up. Inhale reverse. Exhale extend. Inhale reverse. Exhale extend. Inhale reverse. Exhale extend forward one more time and stay forward. Now take a half bind with the right arm behind your back, palm facing away. And then you can bring the left arm to the left thigh. That's good enough. Keep the right shoulder back. If you want to go deeper, left hand to the floor inside your left leg. If you want to go deeper still, you can reach underneath the left leg and find that full bind. But keep the right shoulder high. Keep your chest open to the side. And be sure you're still looking up toward the ceiling, however far you take this. Now hold on to the half bind with the right arm behind your back, but with an inhale, slowly bring your torso upright, left hand to your left hip, and then take a grip on the left side. So bring the right hand all the way across, palms together, fingers and legs, shoulders pulled back. And then when you're ready, put the weight to the left foot, lift your right heel and square your hips to the front of the mat. So you're taking this to a long high lunge. Now adjust as you need to, right hip forward, left hip back, left knee still bent, shoulders pull back, keep your chest open, keep your torso upright. And let's take this into the back legs, so take an inhale. With the exhale, dip the right knee down. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, lower. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, lower. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, lower and stay low this time. Just hover the knee, stay tall, keep your shoulders pulled back. Pulse into that back leg. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Now on one hold. And we're going to take this into balancing. So as many steps as you need, lean forward toward that left foot and then come forward standing with your right knee high. Now, again, take as many steps as you need. Find your balance. Dig into your left big toe. Keep your shoulders pulled back. Slow your breathing down for a moment. And you can always release the bind if you need to, but keep it if you can. Now, from here, once you balance, we're going to take this back and forth, hinging to a warrior three. Keep a little bend in your left knee and then slowly hinge from your left hip. Extend your right leg straight back. And bring yourself as close to parallel with the floor as you can. And then take it slow. Come all the way back up. And bring your right knee up high. Again, hinge from your left hip. Extend your right leg back. Shoulders pulled back. Try to keep your hips level. Keep breathing here. And then bring it back up the vertical. Left knee up high. Right knee up high again. Now hinge from your left hip. One more time. Take it toward that warrior three. Keep your shoulders pulled back. Keep your gaze forward that right leg long, try to lower your right hip and keep the hip squared. Now see about taking it lower. Bend your left knee, start to sink down. Work to bring your belly down toward touching your left thigh. And then take an inhale. And with the exhale, just release both hands down, both feet down, forward fold. Now from that fold, take an inhale, lift up halfway. And then with the exhale, reset your hands. Let's take it across. So palms down. Grip the floor with your fingers. Lift your heels up and bring the knees to touch your arms. Look forward. Lean forward. Just take it slow. And then lift your feet together, big toes to touch. Now bring the heels up toward your seat. You can always stay in your curl, but I'm going to recommend you drop it down and take that flying lizard. Now for the flying lizard, bring the right leg around your right arm. Right foot between your hands from the front. Left knee goes to your left arm from behind. Lift your right foot first and squeeze that arm. Look forward, lean forward, lift your left foot. And maybe just stay here, keep that right leg squeezing. If you want to go further, you can extend that left leg straight back, take things to where you can. And then however you want to exit this, go ahead and take it through your vinyasa, and we'll meet in down dog. Once you find your down dog, give yourself a moment to move around and pedal out. Now let's take all that to the other side. So with your next inhale, raise your left leg high behind you. With your left leg lifted, bend the knee, open to your scorpion dog. Stack the hips, keep the shoulders square. Just breathe with this here. With the next inhale, straighten the left leg through like a dog. Exhale, bring it forward, knee to chest, shoulders over wrists. Inhale, your left leg high. Exhale, forward, knee to right elbow. 
Inhale the left leg high. Exhale forward, knee to right elbow, hold here. And then take an inhale. And with the exhale, set the left foot down outside your left hand. Now keep your arms straight, shoulders to wrist, pressing your palms. Move your hips straight up and down. And again here, you can walk it or we'll hop it on three. So one, two, three. 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 And one, two, and three. Now it's left foot forward, right foot back. Bring that left foot between your hands. And let's take a kneeling lunge here. Bring the right knee down, flatten the right foot behind. You. Hands to your hips, bring yourself upright. Everything stacks to vertical from the right knee up. When you're ready with an inhale, reach the arms high. Exhale, hands through center, right elbow outside your left thigh. Now press the elbow to the thigh. Look over your left shoulder, press into your palms. And find that deep twist. Keep your spine extending at the same time. And if you want to go deeper, bend that left knee, sink the right hip down and forward to take it further. You can tuck the toes, the right foot, hover the knee, but you still twist it however far you go. Now I want you to keep that twist, but bring the left hand to your left hip, keep that left shoulder high, and right hand to the floor, forward your left foot. Now keep your chest facing left, but look down at your right hand. Put the weight to the left foot, pull the right knee in, and then extend your right leg straight back. You're taking it to that revolved half moon. Left shoulder high, look left. You can keep your left knee bent if you need to. Straighten your left leg if you can. See about reaching that left arm high. And if you want to bind it, you can bend the right knee, reach with your left hand. If you find the foot, kick into your hand. Let this pull your shoulder back to deepen the twist. Breathe here. Take an inhale. Exhale, release both hands down, both feet down. Inhale, lift up halfway. And then with the exhale, bring the hands down, slide your left foot back, come into low lunge. From your low lunge, it's warrior two. With the inhale, drop the left heel, lift your torso, wind with the arms, open out to your left side. Deep under the right knee, straight left leg, go ahead and lengthen this out. And sink your hips low. Now half bind, left hand behind your head, palm facing in, elbow points back, draw that shoulder back. Open up the right palm toward the ceiling. And take it back and forth like this. Inhale, reverse. Reach back, lean back, gaze up high. Exhale, extend it forward as far as you can. Keep looking up. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extend. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extend. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extend forward one more time. Hold here. Take the half bind with your left arm behind your back. Palm face me. Keep that shoulder pulled back. Right arm can go to the right leg. Or maybe right hand to the floor inside your leg. Or maybe take the full bind. You can reach underneath and find that grip. Now, however far you go, keep your left shoulder high. Keep looking up toward the ceiling. Keep breathing. Now, I want you to keep that half bind left arm behind your back. But release the right hand. So slowly bring your torso upright. And then right hand meets the left at your right side. Palms together, fingers and lace, shoulders pulled back. And then when you're ready, put the weight to the right foot. Lift your left heel and pivot. Square your hips to the front. Take that long, high lunge stance. Give yourself a moment to adjust. Deep bend left knee, right leg towards straight, left or left leg towards straight. Left hip forward, right hip back. Now keep your shoulders pulled back. Keep your spine upright. And let's take it to the back leg. So take an inhale. With the exhale, dip your left knee down low. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, lower. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, lower. Now inhale, straighten. Exhale, lower and stay low this time. Hover the knee, keep your shoulders pulled back. Pulse into that back leg on my count. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, on one hold. Now from here, take it into balancing. Lean forward to that right foot. As many steps as you need. Come forward, balancing with your left knee high. And again, just take your time, bring yourself upright. Once you're up, dig into that right big toe, slow your breathing down. And try to keep the bind. You can let it go if you need to. Now, once you're ready, put just a little bit on the right knee, back and forth from here to that warrior three. Hinge from the right hip, extend your left leg straight back. Bring your lifted body in line toward parallel with the floor. And then hinge back up, take it slow, and bring your left knee up high. Again, like that, hinge forward. Left leg back, shoulders pulled back. Keep your gaze forward, bring everything in line. And then bring it back upright. Come to standing with your left knee high. One more time, hinge from the right hip. 
Extend your left leg straight back, bring your lifted body in the line toward parallel, parallel with the floor, and keep your gaze forward, keep breathing. Now as you hold this, start to bend the right knee, sink down, try to take it deep, work to touch your belly to the right thigh. Take an inhale, and with the exhale release, both hands down, both feet down, forward fold. Now from that fold, take an inhale, lift up halfway, and with the exhale, set your hands, let's take it to curl, palms down, grip the floor, lift your heels, and bring the knees to touch your arms, look forward, lean forward, take it slow, and lift your feet together, toes to touch, heels toward your seat. Now for flying lizards, set your feet back down, and this time, left leg around your left arm, left foot between your hands from the front, right knee goes to the right arm from behind, lift your left foot first and squeeze that left arm with your leg. Look forward, lean forward, lift your right foot, maybe stay here. Now, if you want to take it further, you extend that right leg back, but keep your elbows pulled in, keep your pose under control. And then however you need to, go ahead, take it to your vinyasa and work the transition. Once you find your down dog, paddle out for a moment. All right, and we'll take it into the next sequence from here. So when you're ready with an inhale, raise your right leg high. Exhale, bring it forward, knee to chest, shoulders over wrists. Inhale, the right leg high. Exhale, forward, knee to left elbow. Inhale, the right leg high. Exhale, knee to left elbow, hold here, stay forward. And then set the right foot down outside your right hand. Now, shoulders over wrists, press into your palms, hips straight up and down. We'll take it back and forth on three. One, two, three. One, two three one two three one two three one two three and one two and three right foot forward left foot back bring that right foot between your hands and then put all the way to the right foot pull your left knee to your chest around your spine take hold your left knee and let's bring this all the way up to vertical now, once you're up again, slow your breathing down, dig down into that right big toe. When you're ready, hands to your hips. Take an eagle bind with your legs. Left leg crosses over the right. Now, squeeze your legs together tight, sink down. You can always touch the left big toe to the floor if you need the support. Keep your hips low. And we'll take the full pose. Reach your arms out wide. Left arm under, right arm over. Cross at the elbows, palms to touch something toward your face. And do what you need to. If you can't get the palms together, reach to opposite shoulders. Now, either way, shoulders down, elbows up, keep your arms squeezing, sink your hips low, keep the legs squeezing as well. And just breathe here. Now, with an inhale, straighten your right leg, lift your left knee, and then slowly open the left side. And let's take this into a horse stance. So sink your hips down low, bring the thighs toward parallel with the floor, move around and then just settle in. Now keep your arms squeezing, shoulders down, elbows up, keep your hips at this level, the legs stay in that horse stance. And we're just taking this toward a halfway fold. So hinge from the hips, but press the hips back without lifting, face your chest down to the floor. Keep your arms squeezing, bring yourself upright, the legs are still in horse. Again like that, pull your hips back, hinge down, face your chest down, keep the arms squeezing. Bring yourself back upright and bring your spine up tall. One more time, hinge forward, keep the knees out wide, keep your hips low, and then take an inhale. And with the exhale, just set your hands down and shake out your legs, move around a little bit. All right, when you're ready, sink back into that horse stance. Thighs toward parallel to the floor, hips down low. Set the right hand down inside your right leg and bring the left hand to your left knee. Now use both arms to keep your knees set wide and keep your hips down low. You can always stay here and this is good enough. Now, if you can take it further, this is going to work toward a variation of Visva Matrasana. So if you're interested, bring the right arm underneath the right leg, right hand outside to the outside edge of your right foot, and start to lean over the right. Keep that left knee pressed out wide. Now, maybe lift the right heel, and that's good enough. You can hook the right leg around your arm, lift the foot completely. Now, if you want to take it further still, this will not be for everybody, but keep your hips low. Keep that left knee to the side, and with your left hand, you can take hold of the outside edge of the right foot. Now, if you can extend that leg, go slow. And the further you extend, the more you'll bring you, be able to bring your gaze up toward the ceiling. Your hips are still low. That left knee is still out to the side. Just take things to where you can. All right, wherever you are here, bring both hands to the floor. Bring both feet down. And again, shake out both legs. 
and then walk your hands over to the left around that left foot, push into the full, bring your left knee all the way down. And we're gonna take a gate stance variation. Now flatten your left foot, left shin parallel to the short side of the mat. Everything from the left knee on up stacks to vertical. Now right leg extends toward the front of the mat, heel down, toes up. And to see how the right heel's in line with the left knee, you can slide that right foot further out if you like. But keep your glutes engaged, keep your hips pressing out to the side. Now once you find your shape, go ahead and reach the arms out wide, keep the arms in line. And then just move from the waist, start to lean left, take it slow, and bring your fingertips all the way down to touch the floor. Now once you touch down, pull your belly in, bring your seat toward the left heel, right hand reaches down to your right leg. And we take this across like a back bend. So with an inhale, sweep your right arm left, hips forward, let your head fall back. And then with the exhale, bring it back down. Inhale, sweep the right arm left, hips forward, let your head fall back. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, sweep your right arm left, open up one more time and hold here. Kick into your left foot, keep your glutes squeezing, stretch your right arm long. And just breathe into this, dig down into the right heel. Now take an inhale. And then with the exhale, bring both hands down around your left knee. And once you're down, bend the right knee, set the right foot flat, point the toes toward the front of that. And we're going to build half moon from the ground up. So walk your hands to the front, tuck the toes to your left foot, lift your left knee. Right hand stays on the floor, fall to your right foot, but further right. Bring the left hand to your left hip and open up your chest to the left side. Put the weight to the right foot, lift the left and extend your left leg toward the back of the mat. Left shoulder and left hip stay high. Now you can keep the right knee bent or straighten the right leg. See about reaching your left arm high and try to stack everything to vertical open to the left. Now, if you want to take it further, you can bind this. You can bend your left knee, reach with your left hand. If you find the left foot, kick into your hand and use that tension to pull the shoulder further back and stack things more open to the left side. When you're ready, hit take an inhale. With the exhale, release both hands down, both feet down, forward fold. From your fold, take an inhale, lift it up halfway. And then with the exhale, set your hands, let's take it to curl. Palms down, grip the floor with your fingers, lift your heels up, and bring the knees to touch your arms. Look forward, lean forward, just take it slow and lift your feet together, toes to touch, heels to your seat. Now for flying lizard, bring your feet down. Right leg around your right arm, right foot between your hands from the front. Left knee goes to your left arm from behind. Now lift your right foot first and squeeze that arm. Look forward, lean forward to lift your left foot, maybe stay here. Now if you're going to take it back and extend that left leg back, keep the elbows pulled in, keep them under control. And then whenever you're ready, however you like, take it through your vinyasa. And once you come into down dog again, take a moment, breathe. Let's take all that to the other side. With your next inhale, raise your left leg high behind you. Exhale, bring it forward, knee to chest, shoulders over wrists. Inhale, your left leg high. Exhale, forward, knee to right elbow. Inhale, your left leg high. Exhale, knee to right elbow, hold here, stay forward. And then set your left foot down outside your left hand. Now keep the arms vertical, shoulders over wrists, pressing your palms. Move your hips straight up and down. Back and forth on three. One, two, 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 three. And one, two, and three. Left foot forward, right foot back, bring that left foot between your hands. And then the left foot to your base foot, pull the right knee to your chest around your spine. Take hold of the right knee, bring it all the way up to vertical again. Now once you're up, just take a moment to breathe, digging out into that left big toe. When you're ready, hands to your hips, take the eagle bind with your legs, bend your left knee, cross the right leg tightly over the left, and squeeze the legs together as you sink the hips down. You can always touch the toes of the right foot to the floor. Now to take the full pose, when you're ready, arms out wide, right arm under, left arm over, cross at the elbows, palms to touch thumbs with your face. Reach to the opposite shoulders if you need to, again, do what works. But keep the shoulders down, elbows high, keep the arms and legs squeezing, and just look forward, keep breathing here. Now with your next inhale, straighten the left leg, lift your right knee. And then slowly open to the right side, step that right foot back, come into that horse stance. So heels in, toes out, bring your hips low, thighs toward parallel to the floor, move around. 
Try to settle in at center with your spine toward upright. Elbows high, shoulders down. Now keep the hips as level. Low body stays as is, but hinge from the hips, press back without lifting, and just come down to a halfway fold. Keep your arms squeezing and bring your torso back upright. Again like that, pull your hips back. Bring your chest down toward facing the floor. And then come back to vertical, you're still in horse, knees are still wide. One more time, hinge from the hips, press back. And just face your chest toward the floor. And then just go ahead, release your hands, shake your legs out a little bit, loosen up your hips. And then come back to that horse stance, bend the knees, thighs toward parallel to the floor. And this time, go ahead, set the left hand down inside the left foot, bring the right hand to your right knee. Now keep your knees wide, keep your hips low, take that bit of a twist. Now this is good enough here, but if you want to take this toward that visible matras in a variation, left arm under your left leg, left hand to the outside of your left foot. Lean to the left side with that right knee still out to the right. Now you can lift the left heel, that might be enough. Maybe hook the left leg around the left arm and lift the foot. You're still basically in horse with that right leg. Now if you're going to take it further, again, not for everybody, but you can bring the right hand to the outside to the left foot, and then maybe extend that left leg. Now the further you extend, the more you can bring your gaze up toward the ceiling, still with your hips low, still with that right knee out wide. Again, just take it to where you can. And then slowly, go ahead, bring both feet down, both hands down, and then walk your hands over to the right side, bring the right knee all the way to the floor, and flatten the right foot, and we'll take that gate stance here. Now right shin parallel to the short side of the mat, everything stacks to vertical from the right knee up. Now extend your left leg straight, toes pointed toward the ceiling, heel down, and keep that left heel more or less in line with the right knee. Now kick into the right foot, press the hips out to the side, keep your glutes engaged. You can slide that left heel further out if you want to take it there. And then reach the arms out wide, keep the arms in line. Now the hips press forward, slowly bend from the waist, lean to the right, and bring your fingertips down to touch the floor lightly here. Now once you touch down, pull your belly and sink your seat toward the right heel. Left hand reaches toward the left foot. And then we'll bring it across more like a back bend again. So with an inhale, sweep your left arm right, hips forward, let your head fall back, open up. Exhale, bring it back down. Inhale, sweep the left arm right, open up. Exhale, come back down again. Inhale, sweep your left arm right, open up, hold here. Kick into the floor, keep your glutes squeezing, reach to that left arm, let your head hang back, press into that left heel. And then take an inhale. With the exhale, bring both hands down around your right knee. Now bend your left knee, set the left foot flat, point the toes to the front of the mat. And then walk your hands forward, tuck the toes to the right foot, lift your right knee. Now stay open to your right side. Half moon from the ground up. Left hand stays down. Forward your left foot, but further left. Right hand to the right hip with the right shoulder and right hip high. Now just look down, press into your left foot. Lift the right and extend the right leg straight back. Stay open to the right. Now you can keep your left knee bent or straighten that leg if you can take it further. Maybe reach your right arm high. Stay open to the side. If you want to bind it, bend the right knee. Reach with your right hand. See about finding that foot. And if you have that grip, kick in your hand to pull the shoulder further back and open you further to the right. Now take an inhale. And with the exhale, release both hands down, both feet down, forward fold. From that fold, take an inhale, lift it up halfway. And then with the exhale, set the hands. Let's take it back to crow one more time. Palms down. Grip the floor with your fingers. Lift your heels up and touch the knees to your arms. Now look forward, lean forward. Just take it slow. Lift your feet up together. Toes to touch, heels to your seat. And then for flying lizard, one more time, bring your feet down. Left leg around your left arm. Left foot between your hands from the front. Right knee goes to your right arm from behind. Lift your left foot first and squeeze that arm. Look forward, lean forward, lift your right foot. If you're going to take it further, go ahead, extend that right leg back. Keep your elbows under control. And then however you like, go ahead, take it to your vinyasa. Once you find your down dog, take a moment here and breathe. And then take an inhale. Now with the exhale, just bend the knees, come down to all fours. And we're going to take this to sort of an odd variation of camel. Now this is going to be with a figure four shape in the legs. And keep in mind, if this isn't going to work for you any reason, for any reason, if you come into that figure four, if you feel any sharp twinge in your knee, just come down with both knees side by side, by side about hips with distance apart, and either with the feet flat behind you or the toes tucked. And you can take the regular version if you like. But give us a try. So go ahead, from all fours, press down, tuck your toes, hover your knees. 
And then step the right foot forward, but up and to the left. Bring your left knee all the way down. Now you can flatten the left foot or keep the toes tucked, whatever serves you best. But with your left hand, bring the right ankle across your left thigh. Now bring the right knee to the floor and you can tuck the toes to the right foot or flatten that foot, whatever serves you best here. Walk your hands in and bring yourself upright. Now keep your hips pressed forward and you can always just keep your hands on your hips just to hold on to this for a moment. And again, if the figure four is not going to work, just set up your legs side by side with the knees about hips with distance apart. Once you're ready to take it further, bring your hands to heart center. Keep your glutes squeezing, press into the floor behind you and keep your hips pressing forward. Draw the shoulders back. Just slowly walk your gaze up the wall in front of you. Find the point in the ceiling directly above. Check in here. And this could be good enough. Keep the front of the body open and long. Now, if you want to take it further, you can walk your gaze further along the ceiling. Maybe look toward the back wall. Further still, maybe reach your right arm back and extend this out. Now, if you've got that figure four or you want to take it deeper, you can reach that right hand down toward your left heel. But keep the front of the body open. Keep your hips pressed forward. Keep breathing. Now, from wherever you are, reel it back in, hands to heart center. Walk your gaze along the ceiling, find the front wall. And then go ahead, bring everything down and come into all fours and release the cross of the legs. Now we'll take the other side. So once you're ready, just press in your palms, tuck your toes, hover your knees. Bring your left foot forward and step it to the right. And then bring your right knee down. Now from here, go ahead and cross the legs. And as I mentioned, you can keep the toes, the right foot tucked or flatten the foot, whatever serves you best. And same thing with the left foot. But bring the left ankle past the right thigh and bring that left knee down. Walk your hands in, bring yourself up, right? And again, maybe this will work on one side but, or not the other. Go ahead, switch this out if you need to. You can always have the shins parallel with the knees, hips with distance. Now, from wherever you are, just engage your glutes and keep your hips pressed forward. And then hands to heart center. Walk your gaze up the wall in front of you. And again, find the point in the ceiling directly above. Check in here. Let the shoulders sink down. Keep your chest open. Keep your hips pressing forward. And maybe you just stay here. Now you can take it further if you like. Walk your gaze along the ceiling toward the back wall. Further still, you can reach that left arm back. And then if you want to take it further, you can reach that left hand toward the right heel. But again, the hips stay pressed forward, your chest stays open, and just keep the front of the body nice and long and keep breathing. All right, reel it back in as you're ready. Hands to heart center. Walk your gaze along the ceiling, find the front wall. And then go ahead, bring your hands down, come down into all fours. And you can take a moment here, move around, maybe shake your legs out a little bit. And then go ahead, bring your legs out from underneath you and take a seat. And this is where we take it toward a angle. Now, the larger purpose of this is to get into the hip opening, keep in mind. So once any of these poses becomes too much, you can stop at any point. And that's all we're looking for here is to get deeper into the hips. But to start, extend your left leg straight and bend your right knee with both hands take hold of your right thigh and then or the right leg i should say squeeze it into the side of your ribs and just move side to side and pull this in as close as you can now when you're ready set the right foot down inside your left leg with about one foot's width between the right foot and your left thigh and then set the left hand down behind you inhale your right arm up high with the exhale reach forward inside the right leg fold down and then press your right arm into the right leg to brace this. Bring that right hand to the floor. Now use the right arm pressing your right leg to draw your torso further forward. And pull your belly forward. Press your low back forward. Touch your belly to your left thigh. If that's not going to happen by itself, bend the left knee and bring the thigh up to your belly. And that'll be good enough. Now if you can take it further, maybe wrap your right arm around your right leg. You can reach back with your left hand and find your grip. And if you get a bind like this, be sure you're pulling the right thigh in close and still pulling forward, touching your belly to your left thigh, but keep breathing here. Take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just release, bring yourself upright. Now keep your right knee bent, let's cradle the legs. So wrap your right arm around your right knee. Left hand to the outside edge of the right foot. Now bring your right shin toward parallel with the floor. Keep the toes of the right foot curled and keep the foot tense. Now sit this up tall and just move side to side. And this could be good enough already. This is basically an upright seated pigeon. Now if you want to take it deeper, if you can bring that foot in closer, maybe wrap your left arm around your right foot. But again, try to keep your shin parallel to the floor. Try to keep sitting this up tall. And this is a good place to stop if you've had enough.
Now, if you want to take things further, we're going to work it toward compass. Just take it in stages. For that, left hand to the outside edge of the right foot, right arm inside your right leg. Use both hands. Work the leg up your arm. You're trying to get the knee behind the shoulder or get as close as you can. Now, once that leg's not going any higher, press your right arm into the right leg. Set the right hand down at your side and just lean into this. And this could already be a good enough stretch. If you're going to go further, go slow. As you extend the right leg, you bring your gaze up and to the left. Don't force it, especially if your hamstrings are tight. But just take it to where you can here. Now slowly, if you extended that leg at all, put the bend back in the knee and try to keep that leg high in your arm. If it slid down, use both hands and work the knee up toward the shoulder. And this is where we take it toward, toward the arm balance. So press your right arm into the right leg. Lean forward onto your right hand to brace this and keep the leg hooked. Left hand comes down part way down your left thigh. Now try to keep some of that forward fold with your chest facing down. Push into the floor, lift your butt up off the mat. And then see about bringing that right foot onto your left leg to hook the leg, and this brings you into elephant trunk. Now this is good enough and you can balance right here. You're going to want to keep some of that fold. If you want to take this toward eight angle, it's a few more steps, ankles together. Inner thighs squeeze around the right upper arm. Don't forget that, that part. Shoulders forward. Bend the elbows back as your legs go right. And the idea here is you hover off the floor with chaturanga arms, basically. Go ahead, bring yourself down when you're ready. All right, and just work things as best you can. We'll take all that to the other side. So once you're ready, extend your right leg straight, keep your left knee bent, and wrap both arms around your left leg. Squeeze it in close to your side. Just move for a moment. And then go ahead and set that left foot down with about one foot's width between the left foot and the right thigh. Now right hand sets behind you. Inhale your left arm high. With the exhale, reach forward, fold forward inside your left leg. Now use your left arm. Press it into your left leg. Left hand to the floor to brace the fold. Draw your low back forward. Press your belly to the right thigh or bend the right knee and bring the thigh up to your belly to find the contact. This is good enough here. If you want to bind it, you can wrap the left arm around the left leg. Right hand comes from the other side. And if you're going to use that bind, keep the thigh pulled in close, and, uh, the left thigh rather, and keep your belly touching the right thigh here. Take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just release any bind you have. Bring yourself upright. Left knee stays bent. Let's cradle the leg. Left arm around your left knee. Right hand to the outside edge of the left foot. Bring that left shin to parallel with the floor and keep your toes curled. And just sit up tall. Move side to side. If you can bring the shin close enough, maybe wrap your right arm around your left foot. And again, just try to keep the shin parallel to the floor. Sit this up tall. You could stay right here. Now, if you want to take it further toward compass, right hand to the outside of the left foot, left arm inside your left leg, work the leg up your arm. You're trying to get the knee behind the shoulder, get as close as you can, but press your left arm into your left leg, set your left hand down at your side, and then just take it slow. If you're going to go further, maybe extend that left leg a little bit, maybe a lot, but don't force it. And the more you extend, the more you bring your gaze up and to the right. All right, now slowly, if you extended that left leg at all, put the bend back in the knee and try to keep the leg high. If it slid down, work it back up toward the shoulder with both hands. Now from here to, into the elephant trunk, left arm presses into your left leg, lean forward onto your left hand, that'll brace it. And keep that bit of a fold, right hand comes outside the right thigh. Now just push down, lift your butt up off the floor, and then hook your left foot under the right leg. And again, this is elephant trunk, you can stay here. Now if you want eight angle, ankles together, inner thighs around the left upper arm, Shoulders forward, elbows back, and the legs go left as you hover this with chaturanga arms. And then go ahead and bring yourself down when you're ready. Now, if you want to work that further, feel free. And if you're ready to move on, bring yourself all the way down to your back. And then just bring the knees in close and squeeze everything in for a moment. Let's take a supine twist variation. When you're ready, just bring the left foot down to the floor. And cross your right leg tightly over the left. So we're back to the eagle bind with the legs. Arms out wide, right and left. Keep both shoulders down. Now when you're ready, tuck your left hip underneath you. Bring your knees down to the left side and keep your legs squeezing. Bring your gaze over to the right. 
Now let the left leg weight the right leg down. And you're looking for that stretch in the outer right hip toward your low back if you need more. You can use the left hand to press the knees further toward the floor until you feel that twist. Take a deep inhale. Now at the exhale, just release this. Bring your knees up to center and reverse the cross. Right foot to the floor, left leg crosses tightly over the right. Just keep both shoulders down. And when you're ready, tuck the right hip underneath you. Bring both knees down to the right side. Now keep your legs squeezing. Use the right leg to weight the left leg down. Find the stretch in the outer left hip toward your low back. If you need more, go ahead, use the right hand and you can press the knees down further until you feel the twist. Just breathe with us here. Take an inhale. And then with the exhale, just bring this back to center, untangle the legs. Bring your knees into your chest side by side. And let's take happy baby, reach between the knees, take hold of the outside edges of your feet. Stack your ankles above your knees and pull down on both sides to try to bring the knees down toward the floor outside your ribs. Press your feet back up in your hands at the same time and keep the tension working both up and down. Now work to flatten your spine, sink your tailbone toward the floor. And then you can rock this side to side to take it further. Further still, you can extend your legs out against your grip. And then finally, when you're ready, take a deep inhale here. Draw it down as much as you can. And then with the exhale, just release. Extend your legs out fully. Lay your arms at your sides. Open up your palms toward the ceiling. And just let your eyes close here and let your body settle down into the mat for a moment. And then just let yourself move again, bit by bit, fingers and toes. Move your arms and legs. And then go ahead, extend this out. Take an inhale, reach your arms out long past your head. And pull everything in, draw the elbows toward your chest. Bring your knees up as well. And then just take your time, find your way up to a comfortable seat. And then just ground yourself into the mat here, stack your spine. Bring your hands up to heart center. Take a deep inhale, hold on to the top. And then just let everything go. And thank you for joining class. Namaste.